How do you go about fixing a rocket and maybe recycling parts from an old rocket onto a new rocket? That's what I'm going to cover in this video. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry building techniques and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Today I'm going to cover the topic that came in from one of our customers. Uh, let me show you some pictures of a rocket that he had built. Um, he built a two-stage rocket and this was the booster stage. Um, it got fried pretty bad and what he wanted to do was to try to fix this rocket so that he could fly it again. Um, he liked the rocket. It was a two-stage rocket and he just needed the booster section similar to uh, this section right here. Um, and he sent me this video of what it looked like and he asked me how I would go about repairing it. So let me go ahead and play that for you. Obviously, initially, the booster did not separate. It did eject the engine, even though they were all friction fit according to Estes instructions. Um, and you can tell the sustainer fired. <laughs> this is the repair job I have to do now. And it didn't burn the epoxy, which is very interesting. Uh, so yeah, thoughts, comments, let me know. Okay, so that's um, the question that he asked. And so I've got this rocket here, and in a situation like his, it's so burned you can't save the tube. Uh, on this particular fin section, I can save the fins and I want to reuse them on a different rocket. So the first part is getting the fins detached from the rest of the body tube. Now you have to be careful doing this because uh, you could crack the balsa wood or whatever wood they're made out of and they might not be usable again. So what I would recommend is taking a hobby knife like this and we want to actually cut into the paper. And this is a very thick, oh, there's a centering ring right there, uh, which is why I can't cut all the way through. So I'm just gonna score along the top. Come around the front. Score. Okay, so now you can see the paper is just tearing away like that. So that's one fin removed. And you can see the centering ring in here that's preventing uh, my knife from going all the way through. Now, if you try to break them off, and if you have a very thick fillet, that's where you could actually break the fin. Now, this particular fin fillet on this fin is pretty small. Um, so I might be able to break it away. And you can see that um, I actually broke the paint off and the paint uh, actually stuck to the tube here. So you could actually break it away. The weak point of any fin, as you can see on the bottom of this, is not the balsa wood, it's actually the paper. This tube is paper and the paper is always weaker than the glue on the fin. And so the paper will actually split first and that's what you see here on this. Um, the next part on reusing re these fins is uh, we have to get rid of that fin fillet along the sides, uh, particularly on this one right here. So now this one here, once the fin has been removed, I can actually just peel the paper away. You can see the paper is delaminating right here where half the paper stays here, half the paper stays here. And that's because, again, the paper is weaker than the glue joint. Um, you can carefully try to break away as much as you can. That's gonna save you some time. But when you get down to this point, this is where you wanna to switch to sandpaper. Um, depending, again, on how thick your fillet is, is what uh, grit that you might wanna use on your sandpaper. So now this here is a really um, coarse grit. This is an 80 grit. Um, and I also have 220 grit right here and then is uh, fine is 320. Um, 
So again, the, the technique here is you want to sand that down, but you don't want to keep your sandpaper perfectly flat because if you're perfectly flat, you're going to sand this part of the fin as well as this. So you want to keep it at a slight angle like that um, as you're sanding. You can see I'm at an angle. I just want to take off that fin fillet right there. Let me do the other side here. And I'm going to do the bottom too. Take off the paper on the bottom. And I actually want to get down to the wood again. Because um, that way I know that the fins are all going to be uniform size. Okay, so I'm down to the wood on that. And then I got this one last fillet here. And if you can feel it with your finger as you go along, um, you want to take that off, you know. So now I'm going, instead of doing it at a high angle like that, now I'm going to get flatter and flatter as I'm sanding. And it's going to start getting into this paint as well. Um, you have to be a little bit careful, but um, just keep checking. See, I can see here the colors changing here at this end um, and at the back end, but not so much in the middle yet. Okay, so now I am definitely, I'm seeing wood over here along the edge, then I'm seeing this dark line, which is actually the primer underneath the paint with the final coat of paint here is white. Um, so I'm actually pretty good. Um, then I would do the other side just like this. Uh, when you get to this point, um, you have to decide, do you want to try to save the paint or not? Um, typically, if I'm going to glue it onto another rocket, I'm going to take the paint off. Um, and in that case, I would switch to a finer grit sandpaper. I don't want to gouge the, the surface of the wood. I just want to take the paint off. And if it has a decal like this one right here, I don't know if this was a water slide. It feels pretty thin, but I can feel it with my finger. Um, you can sand it off or you can take a piece of masking tape, which I forgot to bring, stick that on there and try to peel it off. That masking cape, tape gives you um, more surface area to try to peel it off. But I'll just go ahead and sand. You can actually sand through it. You can see that I, just a little bit of sanding is taking it right off. You don't want to leave that decal on. Um, if there's any glue underneath the decal, um, it's going to affect the paint, so you want to take it off. Um, I don't want to go too much further, you know, getting into the wood like this. I want to stay right on the primer because if I'm on the primer, I know that the surface is smooth. Um, as you go around, around the fin, you can see I'm rotating it in different angles. Um, what I'm doing underneath with my fingers is I'm pressing harder there, and when I press hard there, that means I'm put, I'm kind of slightly bending the wood and bringing up a high spot, which is right where the paint is that I want to take off. So you can see I got my finger right underneath there, and you can see right where I was taking off right there. And then um, if there's any, any low spots, like right here at the edge, because it was kind of rounded over, take the sandpaper off the sanding block or your sanding tee, like this one right here, and use your finger. And that gives you more uh, conforming of the sandpaper to the piece of wood. Normally, I do like to take all the paint off because sometimes you could have an interaction with the next layer of paint that you put on. Um, so, you, you know, that's that paint incompatibility problem that we all face where, you know, you put the next coat of paint on and it crazes on you. 
And you see that and, you know, basically you know you're going to spend the next two days trying to fix it. Um, so this one is, you know, this side is almost done. Just gently taking off the last of the white paint on it. Here, like that. That little bit I can live with. That's not going to affect anything. Um, so I would do the whole thing, both sides and the edges, um, and then do all the rest of your fins. And basically the fin is ready to reuse. Now, why would you want to reuse a fin? Well, in this case, on this particular shape, and I probably wouldn't care, but sometimes the rocket that you're replacing, you have sanded a really nice airfoil into the wood. And sanding that airfoil takes a lot of time and you don't want to replace it. So in that case, that's definitely where I reuse fins all the time. Um, for something with just square edges like this, um, I probably would just start fresh with a piece of, brand new piece of balsa wood. Uh, but I wanted to show you the technique on how to you know, recycle parts so that it saves you less work in the future. So if you like this video, down below there's a subscribe button. I, I would appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. And when you do, it's going to bring up a little bell icon. Uh, and that's the notification icon where if you hit the bell, Google or YouTube is going to send you an email every time we come out with a new video. So my name is Tim Van Milligan. You've been watching the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.